In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to use Google Drawings. To begin, you're going to need to log into your Google account and go to Drive. Once you're there, you're going to click on the New button, go down here, click on More, and then select Google Drawings. This will open a new tab and now we're ready to go. So once we're here, we have a basic empty canvas, some tools, a toolbar, and more. Let's go ahead by titling the name of our drawing by clicking on Untitled Drawing and typing in oh, the name of our drawing. Hitting the Enter key or selecting off of that text area will save the name to your drive. And as you can see here, it has been saved to my drive. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how we can customize the size of our canvas here. So depending on what you're creating, whether it's a poster or a graphic or, you know, something that you plan on printing out, um, you can select the size that you want this canvas to be. So to do that, we're going to go to File, scroll down and click Page Setup. The standard size will be selected, but we're going to go ahead and click that drop down and select Custom. And from there, we can choose in inches or pixels and so forth how large we want this page to be. So a standard page is eight and a half by 11 inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that in. If I wanted it to be landscape or the long way, I would go ahead and type in 11 by 8.5. And there you go. So now that we've resized our work area here, let's go ahead and cover the different tools that we can use to create with this space. We'll start up here in the toolbar. Of course, we have the file, which is going to have everything from creating copies, opening new ones, downloading our product, which we'll cover a little bit later. And as you saw earlier, selecting the size of our page. Then we have edit, which has some basic functionality, view, which allows you to zoom in, add guides, and so forth. The insert menu is one we will take a closer look at in just a moment, but this is ultimately all the different things that we can add onto our page. Format allows you to select, you know, a given text box or shape and make whatever associated changes there are relevant for that given object. Arrange allows us to space and align and distribute and rotate and group our different things on our page. And tools includes things like spelling. We can also use a dictionary and a lot more. And of course, there's help if you ever have any questions. So let's get started by actually adding some stuff onto our page. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna right click in this grid area. Anytime you see a grid like this, it means that it's transparent or there's no background currently. So we wanna add a background. And to do that, we're going to right click and select background from that hover menu. And from there, we can select any of these colors or we can add a gradient, which is a transition between multiple colors, as you can see there. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to select a custom color and I can do that by clicking this button here. And now I can select my custom color by dragging that hue bar and I can adjust the transparency or how see through it is like so. Once I found my color, I'm going to click OK. So as you can see, that's updated the background of the entire page. And now we can go ahead and add some other shapes and objects and text to our page as well. In this toolbar here, you'll see there's the undo button, the redo button, you can print, you can paint formats if you're familiar with that, zoom in. And now we'll get into these tools here. So right now I'm on the select tool, which means if I were to click on an object, which I don't have any, but if I did, it would allow me to select an object. Next, what we're going to take a look at is the line tool. So a basic line is exactly what you would expect it. It's a simple line with two points. But if you click this little drop down, there are different options here, such as an arrow, different connectors, curve, and create custom shapes with poly lines and scribble like so. With our select tool, we can click on those lines and 
adjust their options. We can change the color of the line here. We can change the thickness. We can choose whether or not that line is a straight line, a dotted line, a dashed line, or a combination of that. We can also choose if the beginning and end of the line consists of either an arrow, as you can see there, or something like a dot, like that. And these options will only be available if that object is selected. We can also link lines. So if someone were to click on this, if they were viewing this drawing online and they clicked on it, we could bring them to a link at google.com, so forth. You can also add comments if you're working with your group. And you can tag people in it as well. Format options are also available, very similar to Google Slides or Google Docs, we can adjust these different format options such as position, size and rotation, drop shadow, and reflection. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the text tool. So the text box tool, which you can see here, allows us to add a text box. As you can see, I typed in some text there, and with the text selected, I have a lot of different options here. I can change the font of the text, the size, whether it's bolded, italic, underlined. I can change the color. I can add a highlight color behind it. I can link it out. Again, add comments. Change the alignment to center, left, justified and center or align vertically as well. Can adjust spacing, add bullet points, numbers, adjust the indent, or remove all formatting altogether to go back to the original format. Just like with the lines, there are those format options, so if I want to add some drop shadow or reflection behind my text, I could do that. Next, we'll take a look at the Insert Image tool. So if you click on this in the toolbar, you have options to upload from your computer, search the web, access an image from your drive or photos by URL, or take a picture and then add it directly onto your drawing. So in this example, I'm gonna go ahead and search the web. This is gonna open up a little area over here where, where I can search for an image. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in a word and Google will give me approved images that I can add into my design. To add the image, simply select it and click Insert. You can move images around by clicking them and dragging them on the page, like so. Just like with lines and text boxes, we can add different colored outlines to them and adjust the thickness and the dashes and so forth. We can link them out, add comments. The unique thing about images is that we can crop them into unique shapes. So if I want a unique shape for my image here, I can do that like so. You can also reset the image to go back to just the straight image that we got from the internet. We can replace them with other images from different locations. And of course we have those formatting options just like all of our other objects. The last item here is a straight up comment tool, which is just going to add a basic comment about the drawing, not necessarily in reference to any of these objects here, just a general comment, which of course you can tag a classmate or a teammate or your teacher by using that at sign and then typing in their name, clicking it, and you can assign a comment to them. Like anything in Google Drive, you want to make sure that if you're sharing it with others that the permissions are up to date. So to do that, go ahead and click on this share button. And then from there, you can adjust your settings to anyone with the link, you can view, edit, comment, and so forth, depending on what your teacher prefers. Finally, to export or download or print your drawing, you would go to File. And for downloading, if you wanted to download a PDF or an image version of your drawing, 
you could go File, Download, and select either PDF or JPEG or PNG. These are two image sources, and that would download a version of that to your device, as you can see there. If you want to print your design, you would simply go to File, Print, and it would open up the different options for your printer that you want to print to. There's always the option to save as a PDF, but if you have a connected printer, you can select it and choose your options from there. So there you go. That's a quick overview on how to use Google Drawings. This is a great tool to put together quick ideas, posters, printables, and so much more. Best of luck, and be sure to check out our other videos to learn how to use different digital tools.